Welcome to this Medicine Masterclass on the Endocrine Examination. Endocrinopathies may be spot diagnoses. When examining patients, make sure you have a thorough end-of-the-bed assessment. Examine the patient's hands, arm, face and mouth, their neck, the axillae, chest, abdomen, genitalia and legs, and then complete the examination by thanking the patient. Look for obvious features of, cer of certain syndromes. Patients with Cushing's disease may have centripetal obesity, obvious striae, a moon face and a buffalo hump. Hypothyroid patients may have a visible goiter or may appear depressed with dry hair. Hyperthyroid patients may also have a goiter but may appear agitated with exophthalmos and pretibial myxedema. Patients with polycystic ovarian syndrome may also appear obese and hirsute. Acromegalic patients may appear to have large hands, an enlarged face, nose, prognathism, which is a protrusion of the lower jaw, along with widely spaced teeth. Addisonian patients may have pigmentation of their palmar creases or signs of other autoimmune conditions, such as vitiligo. A patient with growth hormone deficiency may have a short stature. Pseudo-hypoparathyroidism as well as pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidic patients may have shortened fourth and fifth metacarpal joints. You can see a Cushingoid uh, face appearance, a neck goiter, and evidence of exophthalmos. When examining the hands, as mentioned, pay attention to the fourth and fifth metacarpals. Shortening of these may indicate pseudo-pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, Oversized hands or rings not fitting may suggest acromegaly. Hot, sweaty hands with a tremor and palmar erythema or clubbing or thyroid acropachy may indicate hypothyroidism. Pigmentation of the palmar creases may indicate Addison's disease. You can see evidence of shortened fourth and fifth metacarpals. This may suggest pseudo hypoparathyroidism. You can see uh, pigmentation in the oral cavity, suggestive of Addison's. In the uh, adjacent image of the hand, you can see vitiligo, which is also associated with Addison's. And this gentleman has prognathism, protrusion of the lower jaw, along with enlarged supraorbital ridges and an enlarged nose, suggestive of acromegaly, as well as widely spaced teeth. In the hands, pay attention to the nails. Coilonychia would indicate uh, would indicate iron deficiency, and these are spoon-shaped nails. Leukonychia, white discoloration to the nails can suggest hypoalbuminemia. Onycholysis, which is distal nail separation, can be traumatic or, or due to psoriasis, but also due to th thyrotoxicosis. Pitting in the nails can be due to psoriasis or atopic eczema. Terry's nails, where patients have distal, uh, distal half Nails are different colour to their proximal nails, proximally usually pale, distally usually dark, can be due to chronic renal disease or cirrhosis. Splinter haemorrhages may be seen, these are small linear haemorrhages under the nail, as a result of sepsis, vasculitides, subacute endocarditis, or neoplastic or traumatic disease. Bose lines are multiple unpigmented transverse lines and these can occur due to severe illness which transiently arrest nail growth and this can be due to malnutrition. When examining the pulse, assess for the irregularity. An irregular pulse may be due to atrial fibrillation or sinus arrhythmia, and this can be driven by hypothyroidism. Other types of pulse you may appreciate, a slow rising pulse due to aortic stenosis, a collapsing pulse due to aortic regurgitation, a bounding pulse due to carbon monoxide narcosis, a bispherian pulse where there are two systolic peaks, or a jerky pulse associated with hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. Superimpose any of these conditions with hypothyroidism, then the cardiovascular disease may accelerate. In the arms and face, when examining the arms, ask for blood pressure readings. Hypertension can occur due to endocrinopathies. Cushing's syndrome, as well as Conn's syndrome, can cause high blood pressure. Hypotension may be as a result of Addison's disease or adrenal insufficiency. Trousseau's sign is where occlusion of the brachial artery results in carpal spasm. 
So inflating a blood pressure cuff or applying a tourniquet may cause may cause carpal spasm and this would be as a result of hypocalcemia. Another sign of hypocalcemia is tapping over the facial nerve, particularly where the facial nerve divides in the parotid gland into five uh, major branches. This is known as Chofstek sign. So twitching as a result of tapping over the facial nerve can be as a result of hypocalcemia. Pemberton sign is where the patient is asked to raise their arms and if they have an underlying SVC obstruction, which can be as a result of a, of a, a lung tumour or a large retrosternal goiter, causes fullness of the face and flushing. You can see this gentleman, when he raises his arms, the face suddenly fills and this is due to SVC obstruction. Observe the face for any signs of acne. Excessive acne or hirsutism may be due to polycystic ovarian syndrome or Cushing's disease. Observe the features. An enlarged nose, prominent supraorbital ridges or widely spaced teeth or, a, or, a, or prognathism, which is protrusion of the lower jaw, may suggest acromegaly. Observe the eyebrows. Loss of the outer third of the eyebrows can be associated with hypothyroidism. Observe for signs of buccal pigmentation as a consequence of Addison's disease. The eyes, exophthalmos, proptosis and lid lag is associated with hyperthyroidism. And offer to perform fundoscopy looking for changes consistent with diabetes. You may see background disease, pre-proliferative, proliferative or maculopathy changes or even post panphotocoagulation changes in the retina and these would suggest advancing diabetic eye disease. Move on to examine the neck and the chest. Observe the neck, particularly the posterior aspect, for what's known as a buffalo hump appearance. The deposition of additional subcutaneous fat here is suggestive of Cushing's disease. Observe the anterior neck for a thyroid goiter or a scar. These collar incisions of the thyroid gland are subtle scars and can be as a consequence of a previous thyroidectomy due to hyperthyroidism or a thyroid tumour or due to hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism may be primary, secondary or tertiary. If a mass is embedded in the thyroid, it, the thyroid this will move with swallowing. A thyroglossal cyst will move with tongue protrusion. A thyroid brewy is pathognomonic of Graves' disease. Lymph nodes do not move with swallowing. From the neck, puckers the chest to detect a retrosternal extension of a thyroid gland. Observe the nipples for pigmentation. Observe the breasts for any loss of hair or gynecomastia, which may be seen in Cushing's disease. And observe for whether or not milk is being expressed or can be expressed as a result of a prolactinoma. This patient has a large goiter. The second image demonstrates a collar incision, which is relatively recent and so more apparent. And the third image demonstrates a thyroglossal cyst. The World Health Organization have a system of grading a goiter. Grade one is no palpable or visible goiter. 1A is a goiter detectable on palpation and 1B is where the goiter is palpable and visible when the neck is held in extension. A grade 2 goiter is a goiter that's visible with the neck in the neutral position and grade 3 is a large goiter that's visible from a distance. Examine the abdomen and the legs. Striae may suggest Cushing's disease. Genital atrophy or virilization can occur due to panhypopituitarism and observe for signs of peripheral neuropathy as a consequence of diabetes mellitus. Loss of power in the legs may be as a result of hypothyroidism, as will slow relaxing reflexes. Pretibial myxedema, which is demonstrated here, is a waxy discoloration and induration of the skin, and this is associated with Graves' disease or hyperthyroidism. Thank you for attending this medicine masterclass.